Please note that this live event is being recorded. Please ensure that the correct audio settings or device is selected to ensure that you can hear the presentations. Please make use of the chat feature to share your thoughts with the other attendees or to let us know if you are experiencing any technical difficulties. Please do keep your cameras off and microphones muted during the presentations, but rather make use of the Q&A feature to submit your questions to the panel. These questions will be answered during the question and answer session after the presentations. Thank you. Knowledge and learning underpin the progress we make as individuals and as a society. When we know more, we can solve new problems and explore fresh possibilities. For hundreds of years, Oxford University Press has been committed to sharing the best in human thinking. From a child reading their very first words to a researcher expanding the frontiers of their field, we passionately believe in the transformative power of knowledge and learning to inspire progress and realize human potential. But the world is changing. When all information is at our fingertips, data needs understanding. As content crowds every screen, ideas need space to breathe. And when the next great thinker can come from anywhere, they need to be seen. So Oxford University Press is changing too. Whether we're making learning work for anyone, anywhere, anytime, connecting a global community of English language learners, or helping influential ideas achieve greatest impact, we will meet the needs of education and research in new ways, with new ideas for new audiences. For as long as the world keeps making progress, we will always be advancing knowledge and learning. Oxford University Press. Advancing knowledge and learning. Hello and welcome. My name is Asif Kapoor a proud member of the Oxford University Press team. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us on this webinar today. Oxford University Press is an award-winning publisher with over 100 years of trusted experience. Oxford, or OUP, as we are affectionately known, publishes in all education bands, including TVET. Our Succeed in TVET brand and range advances knowledge and learning through our delivery of high quality and affordable print and digital material, which is well suited for the TVET classroom. Our books are well researched, carefully developed, and are all DHET approved. The exciting changes that government has made within TVET, specifically mathematics, is an exciting one with the upskill of our students. You, the lecturer, standing at the forefront of content delivery, we commend you and we are honored to guide you through these changes and how to approach the new syllabus. Let me take this time to introduce our subject matter expert and author, Arthur Oliver. Arthur is a civil engineer and holds a civil engineering qualification, as well as a BSc degree in mathematics and computer science. He also holds a master's degree in environmental management. With his expertise, he has developed the following computerized systems for Woolworth South Africa, the Textile Laboratory Management Control Reporting and Decision Support System, the South African Judicial Magistrates Court System, the online MIS for Mohe South Africa, and an online farming and transport permit system for importer and exporters of South Africa. Including other computerized systems, Arthur is a well-accomplished civil engineer and has been for the past 23 years um, managing civil contracts. So without further ado, I'll hand us now over to Arthur. A great welcome to all your colleagues. Thanks for logging in to join us in this presentation of the latest succeeding series book. I would first and foremost like to thank Oxford University Press for the opportunity to introduce the Succeed in Mathematics N4 book to you. Without the input, support and ongoing advice, this book would not have been possible. Today we'll be discussing the revised TBET 2022 curriculum for N4 Mathematics. 
It has been a long time coming since the previous curriculum was set up in 1998. It was further decided that this book would deviate from previous maths books in that the content presentation would form the contextual model, making the study of mathematics more relevant to the student's vocation. This automatically encourages the students to want to understand and master the content, as they immediately see how this will personally benefit them in their future careers. On completion of their studies, they must be able to integrate seamlessly into the workforce. This book will ensure that their future studies in N5 and N6 mathematics will ensure this seamless transition. Another very important feature that these new succeeding books bring to the market is the fact that every single example or problem progresses line for line with every progression explained in minute detail. This helps the student to immediately follow how the problem advances to the next stage. All the answers and only the answers are available at the back of the book and yes, they are all correct. Another super feature is the fact that a separate lecture's guide has been made available. This volume consists of all the solutions to all the problems and activities printed out in great detail. It now becomes a simple task for the lecturer to give homework or to create a test as no detailed solutions are presented in the student's book. After all is said and done, the main focus of these books is to assist the lecturers in their preparation and presentation of their lectures and to make the student more employable in industry. It seems imperative that the college curriculum, which is at the heart of the South African vocational education and training system, be restructured to enhance responsiveness to industry needs and requirements and to improve technical and vocational education and training standards, enhancing student employability in the industry and knowledge and experience of college leaders. The aim of the revised syllabus is to provide learners with the skills to identify and calculate mathematical problems in N4, and the contents form part of engineering calculation problems from industry. Furthermore, Mathematics N4 will equip students with relevant knowledge to enable them to integrate meaningfully into their trade subjects and also form the foundation for their N5, N6 syllabus. The specific aims of the revised syllabus are to conclude pre-calculus and introduce differential and integral calculus, thereby serving as a prerequisite for Mathematics N5 and Mathematics N6. To assist students to obtain trade-specific subject knowledge. To promote correct mathematical terminology. To promote and focus on word problems and the problem solving thereof in order to prepare the students for their relevant careers. This section is extremely important as the students in the working environment will be challenged by actual problems in industry and then must be able to analyze the problem in situ. This requires higher order thinking which must be developed in the classroom. And finally, to use technology in mathematics and apply mathematics to further technology. When it comes to syllabus overview and comparison, you will notice that one section, equation manipulations and word problems, have been removed. Actually, it has not been removed, but distributed throughout the syllabus, allowing you to phrase a problem in any module to test and encourage the students' higher order thinking. Sketch graphs have been included in functions and graphs, whereas limits and differentiation has obviously been moved to differential calculus. The main difference in the old and new syllabi is the more advanced level of tuition. The level of difficulty has been stepped up to accommodate the requirements of industry. Due to the advance in technology, the old syllabus almost became redundant and new, higher levels of mathematics had to be introduced to keep it separate technology. It is of absolute importance that students can relate the section being taught to the application thereof in other subjects. For example, the teaching of determinants assist the students in strength of materials where they have to analyze the stresses of an open space frame. By inserting the three stress equations in a matrix, the solving thereof is relatively straightforward. Similarly, the connection between complex numbers and electrical circuits makes the need to study it that more understandable. As far as the module weightings are concerned, I'm glad to see the powers that be got it spot on. It is pretty obvious where the main attention is concentrated. Trigonometry gets a 20, with the two main sections of differentiation and integration scoring a 25. This makes absolute sense as mathematics at the higher echelons almost entirely consists of these two disciplines. 
As trigonometry is found in great abundance of differentiation and integration, the scoring of 20 is also applicable, as the basics of trigonometry, especially identities, crop up everywhere. When we come to the year mark allocation for internal assessment marks are valid for a period of one year and are referred to as ICAST trimester marks. A minimum of 40% is required for a student to qualify for entry to the final examination. Two formal class tests for full-time and part-time students or two assignments for distance learning students will be done. The calculation of trimester marks will be as follows. The weight of test one or assignment one will be 30% of the syllabus. The weight of test 2 or assignment 2 will represent 70% of the syllabus. Externally, a final examination will be conducted in April, August and November of each year. The pass requirement is 40%. The final examination will consist of 100% of the syllabus and the duration of the final examination shall be 3 hours. The final examination will be a closed book examination and the minimum pass mark shall be 40%. Mathematics plays an important role to improve student skills in technical, vocational education and training. However, most students perceive difficulties in assimilating mathematical knowledge. All of the topics included are difficult to implement in their working lives. This means that, in the process of learning mathematics, lecturers fail to relate the content to real-life situations. Does teaching mathematics contextually have a positive impact on TVET students? And does the contextual method based on the student's achievement have a positive impact in the process of learning mathematics in TBET? The learning procedure in TBET systems is based on the rules of the modern era. These rules include competitiveness and a full set of skills that are related to specific occupations. This means that after joining TBET institutions, graduates wish to have specific competitive skills which can be useful to them in their particular professions. Wagner in Marin 2016 said, The mission of teaching mathematics in special educational institutions is to give knowledge necessary for the study of professional disciplines and develop the mindset and mental skills of students, and in so doing, teaching them how to think. To achieve this, the curriculum and the teaching methods of mathematics should be well prepared, especially for vocational education. The aim would be to provide knowledge and critical thinking skills to students. However, based on interviews with students, 7 out of 10 students had a negative attitude towards mathematics. The most common reason advanced was that the students could not understand the usefulness of mathematics in the institutional context, besides having a great lack of basic mathematical concepts. This indicated that the students had difficulty in receiving and analysing the knowledge transferred by the mathematics lecture. This situation has dire consequences for students in terms of their mathematical knowledge and ability. The result shows that the distribution of mathematical knowledge amongst the class is more prevalent than the control class. The generalization is that the contextual method in teaching mathematics can give a positive impact to the students, such as distributing the knowledge to almost all of the students properly. After all the tests were completed and the results analysed, it was very clear that there was a massive difference when mathematics was taught contextually in a TVET institution, leading to an increase in the student's higher order of thinking. Model 1 in N4 consists of determinants. Conversion of equations with two or three variables into determinant. Calculation of second or third order determinants by means of row elimination or gauche jordan system. Calculation of second and third order determinants by means of Kramer's rule. State and calculate the minor of a third order determinant and determine the cofactor of the minor. Module 2 consists of complex numbers. There's quite a few different ones here. Define an imaginary complex number. Identify real and imaginary parts of a complex number in rectangular form. Simplify complex numbers. Add, subtract, and multiply complex numbers in rectangular form. Define and determine the conjugate of a complex number. Divide complex numbers in rectangular form using the conjugate. Define the modulus and argument of a complex number and plot them on an Argand diagram. Convert a complex number from rectangular to polar form and vice versa using a pocket calculator or any analytical method. Multiply and divide complex numbers in polar form. 
state and apply the Moveres theorem to products, quotients, and powers of complex numbers. Solve complex equations in rectangular or polar form. In module three, we come to trigonometry. Now there are 12 sections involved. The first being the calculation of special triangles pertaining to the four quadrants. The concept of negative and positive angles to all calculations relative to this syllabus. The notion of compound angles such as sine a plus or minus b, cos a plus or minus b, and tan a plus or minus b. Notice the absence of sec, cosec, and cotia. The complementary angles specifically related to trigonometrical identities. Factorization of different types of trigonometrical equations, including the use of identities. The use of identities cannot be stressed enough here. Students tend to not want to learn them. We as lecturers must insist that they get to understand the identities and know them off by heart. It's extremely important, not only here, but also when it comes to uh, differentiation and integration. The derivation of the following identities, compound angles, double angles, and half angles. Further, we have to derive the co-ratios of sine 90 plus or minus theta, cos 90 plus or minus theta, and tan 90 plus or minus theta. The square inverted quotient identities. Solve trigonometrical equations, simplify trigonometrical expressions, and prove trigonometrical identities. The last one is extremely important. We have to stress that they do be able to prove these identities, because they're going to be asked in the exam. In module four, we come to our difference and distinguish between functions and relations. Identify the relevant functions that relate to their graphs. Points of symmetry with reference to an axis or the lines y equals plus or minus x. And finally, inverse functions and relations. When it comes to drawing sketch graphs, they have to know the following. They must be able to recognize and draw a straight line, recognize and draw the circle. And when it comes to the circle, they also have to know the four half circles. Now it's important for them to know in which coordinates they lie and what they look like. Finally, we come to the hyperbola, standard hyperbola, no movement of it. A standard ellipse, once again, no moving up or down. And we then end up with our two exponential graphs, our three log graphs, and then we come to our tree graphs. Now all six tree graphs are expected to be sketched. We have the sine, the cos, the tan, the cosec, the sec and the cot. The only difference is that with the sine, cos and tan, we can move them left or right or up or down. Whereas with the cosec, sec and cot graphs, they are standard. They have to know the parabola in all its forms. And finally, they have to know how to draw a cubic equation with knowing where the turning points are and what the local maximum minimum are, as well as being able to define the roots of that equation. Finally, we come to the last two modules, which in my opinion are the most important. In module five, we cover differential calculus. This includes the calculation of indeterminate limits, the use of binomial theorem in general terms, expand a simple binomial with rational indices only to four terms, define differentiation as a rate of change. They also have to be able to derive the formula for differentiation from first principles where f of x may only be one of the following. f of x equals a x to the n plus b, or f of x equals a to the x n plus b x to the n minus 1 plus c x to the n minus 2, and so forth. Where n must be between 0 and less than 4, not 4, less than 4. Furthermore, they have to determine the derivative dy over dx of the following. They straightforward the y equals x, the y equals x, x to the n, and so forth. We also have y equals k to the lin and the log. We also have y equals k to the sine or the cos or the tan, the cot, the sec, or the cosec. Then we have to apply the chain rule to find the first derivative of y equals k a n to the x, or the exponential of e, or the two log ones. They also have to be able to do y equals k sine bx, cos bx, tan bx, sec bx, and cosec bx. Notice cot is not included. Apply the product and quotient rules to simple differential products and quotients. 
Combinations of product, quotient, and or chain rules may not be asked. Determine the second derivatives of trigonometrical functions. Algebraic terms of polynomials to determine the maximum, minimum turning points or points of inflection for functions in this syllabus. Sketch graphs indicating the maximum minimum values must also be able to be done. Finally, we come to module six. This involves integration. Understanding integration as the sum of a definite or indefinite integral. Applied standard forms of integrals as anti-differentiation. Integrate functions given on the integration sheet. Now, they will include kx to the n, where n is real with n not equal to minus 1, k over x, ka n to the x, ke n to the x, where a is greater than equal to naught and kn part of the reals. k sine bx, k cos bx, with b and k parts of the reals. Integrate polynomial terms of the above forms. Apply integration to determine the magnitude of an area included by a curve and the x-axis or by a curve, the x-axis and coordinates such as x equals a and x equals b, where a and b are integers. The graphs are limited to those given in module 4 and those functions can be integrated with n4 knowledge of integration. Using the definite integral with two limits to calculate the area bounded by the graph, the x-axis and values given to define the area. Areas included are those above, below and joined area above and below the x-axis. Calculate the intersection points of two curves and sketch the two curves on the same system of axes, indicating the area bounded by the two intersecting points calculated and show the representative strip used to calculate this area. That takes care of the nitty-gritty. But what else have we included in this book to make it something special? Well, each module has an introductory story relative to the work that's in that module. We've included QR codes, worked out examples, multiple activities, module summaries at the end of each module, formula sheets, short answers in the student's book and fully worked out solutions in the lecturer's guide. This includes a few new, not previously included features in this book which makes it pretty special. Well, that brings us to the end of this presentation, but I'd like to leave you with this last thought. The responsibility of our youth's future, as well as the corresponding positive or negative productivity of our country, rests squarely on us, the lecturers in the TVET environment. It is the TVET student that becomes the leader in the labor market. Knowing mathematics, he can enter the workplace with confidence. The world is developing at an astronomical rate and technology must keep abreast with the times. The responsibility of carrying this baton rests squarely on our shoulders and we must be up to the task. We as mathematics lecturers are in a very privileged position as our subject is very relevant and current and continuously developing. Gone are the days when a mathematics lecture can come out of retirement and start from where he left off. As technology advances, so must our personal skills. It is a well-known expression and oh so true. Mathematics is the queen of the sciences. I want to thank you for your presence at this webinar and wish you all the best for your future. Thank you very much, firstly, for taking the time to join us on this virtual learning experience. And thank you to our expert, subject matter expert, Arthur, for that um, good introduction and um, in-depth conversation to the syllabus, its changes, and the differences between the old and the revised syllabus. So my part here this morning will be to share with you <clears throat> a bit about Oxford University Press recipe and our Succeed In brand for our TVET landscape. So not to waste any time, let's get straight into it. So what you can expect with your offerings, it would be a student book, and a lecture guide. So these two books work hand in hand with each other, allowing students to also work on their own in the absence of a lecturer or when the lecturer is perhaps busy um, attending to a group of students and not to every individual student at a particular point in time. So the textbook is a fully functional resource that allows students to also um, take ownership and the responsibility of their studies through the Maths N4 syllabus. 
And the lecturer guide, of course, that is for you, our lecturers, um, because we know time is valuable and of the essence to you. So we've placed in this resource all the requirements that you need as a lecturer going forward into your classroom, but saving you the administrative time of looking for answers or lesson plans. But we'll get to that very soon in this presentation. So what exciting features, advantages and benefits can you expect when you adopt the Succeed in Maths in four resources? Just before I get to those features, advantages and benefits, I want to share with you a little secret, an inside secret. This is the recipe that we at Oxford University Press in our publishing department, sales and marketing, are proud of and we use it to speak to you, the audience of the TVET market. And this is known as our LAP Quality Assurance Model, L-A-A-P-P. And that simply stands for language, activities, assessment, progression, which is your final examinations and planning. So with language, we know that our students are not always first, or English is not always their first language. Sometimes it's the second and often it's a distant third. And also the language of mathematics is in itself um, quite intensive. So how we've assisted in this part of our recipe is to ensure that the language that we use in terms of our introductory stories, explanation, definitions are TVET appropriate. And that students within your TVET classrooms can understand language and the use of the language and comprehend the subject matter that's being brought across. So we use this in all things that we do that is language related, our activities as well. Then we get to activities, right? Now activities are a way for students to build up their competence and knowledge towards that final examination and that confidence in actually doing their work. And it's pointless, they just have one or two. So in each module, there is a vast amount of activities that students can use and practice either with you in the classroom, with peers together or on their own to build up that competence so that they are confident in their delivery of their work before entering the next module or before finishing the book and entering the national examinations. Assessments. So assessments are the one tool that we use internally in our ICAS to determine students' uh, level of progression. So at the end of each module, we've simulated the expectancy of a national examination, um, of an internal examination, but through the methods and mechanisms of national examination type questioning. And at the end of each module, you will find this, where the assessment can either be used as a formative in class or as an extension to, to the activities for students to do at home and then to check in class. This will all depend on how much time you have. So we provided all the activities and assessments for you to pluck and choose and use at your disposal in class or assign as homework. Then, of course, you have your trimester exams. And that is where we want to see our students flourish, pass, so we can get our retention rates, we can get our progression rates and pass rates as well. So at the end of the book, there is a mock national examination paper for you as well and for your students to thoroughly prepare them and guide them towards the national examinations. And then planning. Planning is the final part of our recipe within our quality assurance model because we know as lecturers, a trimester is never a trimester. There is the ideal time that we need to spend with students, but then there is the realistic time that we have with our students in terms of COVID-19 and the rotational timetables, in terms of uh, the, the students coming to class, not coming to class, late registrations. There's a multitude of factors that influences the amount of time you have to do planning. So we've assisted in this area as well, and I will get to that quite soon. So now that you have a little bit of an inside story of who we are at Oxford University Press and the recipe that we use, let's look at some key features, advantages and benefits of using 
the maths N4 succeed in book. So the first area is our index and module openers. So the index page is the front page, of course, but that is verbatim from the DHET's prescribed syllabus. So not a word out of place and the order is exactly the same. So this gives you, the lecturer, the same confidence and guidance that you would have as if you were looking in the actual syllabus. It also allows the students to progressively see where they are starting, where they are ending per module and for the whole N4 syllabus. Then you have your module openers. Now the module openers features quite a bit. So it starts with a flow diagram indicating the various overarching units that will be completed within the module. And that allows the students to see where they're starting, moving and ending up with. Then you have a breakdown of the modules or learning outcomes based on the units within the module. Now the learning outcomes will of course be what the students should be able to do. So they are listed underneath the unit outcomes. And right after that listing of learning outcomes, because students generally don't tend to read those learning outcomes, we have incorporated them indirectly within an introductory story. So the introductory story, again, considering languages, right, within our recipe, we've molded those outcomes into a story so that students can relate and also understand it in terms of a real life scenario or real life application. And it, it provides them with a bit of a playground where questions are opened up and a story is being built in, incorporating those learning outcomes. So that's another way in which we are assisting the students also understand why they are doing something before they actually do it. And then where there are opportunities, and that will be the next section, we've included QR codes as well. Now the QR codes is amazing in terms of the digital age that we are in and also the blended approach in terms of moving from just text display into a bit more of a digital learning experience. So the QR codes are closely related either to the content, the introduction or whatever topic is being discussed. And it, it's an extension to, to the learning outcomes that's prescribed by the Department of Higher Education and Training. And it also adds to an enhancement of the learning experience and teaching experience within the classrooms. So the module openers are introductions that help students understand practically what the module is about. The QR codes help enhance the learning experience and offers an extension. And then there are definition boxes that help reinforce key terms and their meaning. And all of this is done around the quality assurance element of languages. Then we have worked out examples and activities. So before students can actually attempt an activity and work on their own confidently, content is explained by way of a worked out example. And there are quite a few worked out examples before actually starting activities or they are broken up in between the activity. Once the worked out examples are expressed explicitly and in multitude, then there are various activities that allow students to actually slowly start building up confidence and their competence within the content. And as the module progresses, the, the activities incorporate that which was learned previously as well. Key terms and note boxes. So as soon as we identify a key term on a page or a second page, wherever it may be, and it's a term that students need to know within this module, or it is terms that is constantly used in internal assessments and external or national examination papers. These key terms are then beautifully displayed within key term boxes that allow students visually to separate this from the text that has been displayed previously. We also have note boxes in terms of um, important areas that we would like students to take note of. And then also examination tips when it comes to certain areas of content. And all of this was done 
through the expert knowledge of our author, who you've met already now, and see that he has the expertise and the knowledge in classroom and industry to actually display or share these types of tips and keynotes and um, remembering note boxes as well. And then we have within the book as well, what's called a flashback. So if there was something in the N3 module that was taught already, but it is continuing now in the N4, then a little flashback or a box that says flashback at the top will appear on that section of page or work and indicate to the student, can you remember that in N3 we did so and so and so. And now we will be progressing further in four with that same element of work. Then our end of modules. Now the end of modules is quite a comprehensive and fun filled end of section that boasts firstly a module summary. So students or learners, everybody has a different learning mechanism. Some are auditory, some are visual, some are um, written learners where they need to write everything over. So we try and accommodate all of these learning areas and abilities. And one of the ways in which we do that is to provide an end of module summary. So students can compare the summarized key points. I mean, there's four points that has been beautifully summarized for module one. In terms of what were the key concepts and areas that were dealt with in this module. And students can then ensure that that is what is displayed in their own uh, study methods in terms of their notes or audios or recordings, however they choose to study. So that after that, you have a module checklist. So we give you the summary, but then we go granularly within each element of a learning outcome and indicate an empty box of yes and no. So this can act as a quality assurance mechanism for the students, but also you, the lecturer. So if you ask the students to, at the end of the module, you assume right, everybody knows what they should know, you can ask them to turn to this page of the module checklist and tick off what they know and what they don't know and ensure that they tick everything. And you as the lecturer can just simply walk through the classroom and check this page while it's open on the desk. Or if you're doing a virtual classroom, they can keep it up to the camera, for example. And you will then concentrate on those areas of the student where no is indicated in terms of guiding them with the page numbers, for example, where there are empty blocks indicated to ask maybe were you absent on that day that you're not sure what this learning outcome is about. And where there's yes, test them. Do a quick informal test. For them to share their knowledge and to ensure that and to show them that you are taking this checklist quite seriously and that by ticking yes it's actually an acknowledgement that they know their work so it's a nice mechanism you can actually use in class and straight after the checklist we have the um, exam preparation section but this is only for that module and each module has one and at the end of all the modules these are combined in variation, so it's not copy and paste from the same questions. And in variation, it is combined towards producing one final national examination. So you will note that on the exam practice papers, it's broken down exactly as it would be in an internal or external exam that gives the mark allocations as well, so that students know the extent of which they need to answer. But all of this was already guided and built up with them through the worked out examples, the part of the activities, and now the exam practice. And this part of the book is done around the recipe elements of assessment and progression. If we move on further, the book also boasts a formula sheet. Now formulas are always a challenge no matter which subject we are looking at in business or engineering. Formulas are always areas that, um, that are daunting for students. So we've assisted by providing a formula sheet that nicely displays the area of the formula as well as the actual formula without any samples or activities, just the pure formulas. So that this can become a study guide or a piece of study material for students. Then we have 
as I mentioned, the national mark examination paper, the full city hour paper, the full mark extent, and the full layout as they would see it in the national examination. And then the lecture guide. Okay. So earlier mentioned, time is of the essence. And we want to help as far as we can with your time and administrative duties. So one of the ways in which we have provided this in the lecture guide is the teaching plan. So the teaching plan is a neatly laid out table that summarizes the outcome, the work examples that need to be done, the activity or the assessment that is aligned to that module or outcome, the resources that you would possibly be using and specifically be using. So for example, there are QR codes in the book for unit 1.1 that speaks to the matrices in real life football in 90 seconds and the beauty of LCR oscillations. I wouldn't even attempt to say those words. So it's guiding you in terms of the resources that you would use. And then the last column is empty. That's only because each college has their own guided trimester plan and assessment plan, but also their realistic um, classroom management and delivery. So as soon as you are ready to plug in a date of start and end and sign it off, that column is there for you. And this can then be photocopied either from the print version or copy and pasted from the electronic version into your college's templates of your lesson plans or semester, uh, trimester plans and used in your portfolio of assessment or portfolio of evidence. So this is one way in which we pitched in in terms of our recipe element P, if anyone can remember, shout it out. It's planning, excellent. So this saves you the time. Then the lecturer guide has all the activity solutions as well as the module examination solutions and the national mock exam solutions. So all of this is provided to you. You don't need to work it out on your own. So this can either be used for you when you do formative assessments for the students, or you can actually take a picture of it and share it with the students if it is a self-reflective assessment that you're giving them to do um, in the beginning. And then you can share it over your mediums of WhatsApp, Moodle, whichever method of digital platform you use as a lecturer with your students. And then our digital content. So, an advantage of being a prescribing lecturer and using our books is that you get free access to our digital platform, which is currently called Learning Zone. And we are soon migrating over to our exciting new platform called EduZone. So it's the same free content, but just on a new and innovative delivery mode and platform. So what you will find there is the uh, separated module lecture guide, the basic PowerPoint presentations that you can use front of classroom. And the PowerPoint presentations are not locked, meaning that you can insert, extract, omit, delete, add as you feel. So if you feel that there are extra resources that you have in your personal uh, resource bank that you've collected over the years, you can then insert extra slides and then build onto this basic slide um, formation that we have provided to you for free. And this is another way in which we want to thank you, first of all, for being teachers and guiding the students that are in front of you. And secondly, saving you the time from doing this from scratch, even though how small it is, that little bit of time amplified over a trimester comes to a lot in the end. And I wanted to share with you a few comments and of course, positive around the screen of the national textbook screeners from the Department of Higher Education and Training that approved our book um, first off and um, without any hiccups. And these are a few of the comments that came across in terms of the features and benefits of the book. Um, and just want to share a few with you in terms of the how to use this book guide. So that is just a page that indicates to you and the students how to actually navigate and use the book in terms of what is a key term, what is a um, definition box and so on. And that was seen as an excellent 
um, extension of the book or introduction to the book. Um, the learning zone, which was mentioned now, can be obtained through a QR code, which we provided in the book that you can scan and access. Um, the, the inclusion of a glossary at the end of the book with all the terms and definitions is a welcome addition. And there are, oh, here's another one, for example, the author specifically names, and this is how careful, um, carefully chosen the, the elements are within the textbook and the knowledge that is poured in through the years of the author. The author specifically names the calculator used for converting. And this was an excellent addition according to the screener that will really guide students adequately when using those calculators. And there are a few other uh, excellent display of gra uh, graphs and pictures or graphical displays and pictures. So it's the way the book is laid out, text, pictures, QR codes, examples, it's done in a thoughtful manner as if we were in the classroom with you teaching the students. We just took that knowledge and placed it on paper. So I'm, I, was, I was happy to share with you a few of the screeners' comments. So in summary, with our lab quality assurance model, <clears throat> we align ourselves fully to the DHET syllabus, nothing out of place. We used an experienced industry and classroom experienced author to write the content. We align our books, student book and lecturer guide, as well as the lesson plans. We use additional or provide you with additional resources, such as your PowerPoint presentations. We have our module openers, the module introductions and QR codes, the individual activities plus worked out examples. We have key terms and definition boxes and reminder boxes. We have end of module summaries, checklists and end of module examinations. We have a national examination exemplar plus a glossary of terms. We provide you with a digital platform where we house all the digital content, which you can access for free. And then additional support such as this, which is webinars and then workshops further on, on the request. So thank you very much for attending and be sure to look out for our N5 Succeeding Maths textbook and our N6. The N5 is well in production. I can smell the pages going already through the printers and the N6 is being written as we speak. So you can look forward to those uh, continuation of the titles so that you have one cohesive and coherent set of books for your students and it will move in terms of an understanding between N4, N5 and N6 and flashbacks and so forth. So be sure to check it out as soon as it's released. Thank you very much colleagues for your time and listening to our presentation here today. I trust that it has provided you with some inside guidance and some inspiration towards the new um, uh, and revised mathematics in four syllabus. So that's all from me today. Thank you very much and have a good day further. Um, we are going to open the floor now to you, the audience, to send us any questions, comments or feedback that you do have that myself and Arthur would be able to address immediately or get back to you on if it is something very specific that we don't have at the moment. So at this point, I want to invite Arthur to join us on screen. Um, and I am sure that he is ready and excited to receive and address any questions that you may have. Please use the Q&A or chat section to pose your question and um, on our end. Um, hi Arthur, nice to see you again. And uh, you see that you are ready for our questions from the audience. Absolutely. Okay, excellent. So, um, please don't be shy. Send us through your questions and we will read them out anonymously, only focusing on questions and answer them. Uh, comments, feedback, welcome. And keep it open for about five to eight minutes to address this. Uh, I can see lightning happening in the chat. I'm excited to see that. Okay, a few copies. Thank you for the presentation. Um, thank you to Arthur. Very detailed explanation of the syllabus and modules um, for per module explanation. Uh, thank you very much. We appreciate that uh, positive feedback.
Okay, Arthur, here's one, and I think this is definitely up your alley and for you. What is the most significant change between the old and new syllabus for maths in four? Uh, see, I don't think it's such a great change as the scope of the work is much broader than previously, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, the second point I would say is the difficulty level of the problems uh, has definitely been raised the bar quite a bit. And uh, there are more concept-based mathematics than there was before. And the, I found a very important point is the deprivation of the identities uh, is accentuated in this in the syllabus. Because in the past, a student, I talked for myself as well when I, was, when I was there, we don't like to prove these things, but it's critical that we, we, that we teach the students how to do it properly. Uh, I, I would recommend, I would almost say that about 25% of the mark in the exam uh, is contained in proving their identities. So uh, I would certainly, um, you know, stress the point that uh, we as lecturers insist that the students now have to prove these identities as they crop up everywhere. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much for that uh, informative response, Arthur. Um, I trust that that has uh, answered the, the audience member's question. A few more comments rolling in and coming through. Um, again, just general feedback of thank you for the presentation. Um, thank you. Okay, here's a question in between. Where can I get a sample copy of the book? Okay, I'll take this one, Arthur. So a sample copy can be requested because I'm sure you are joining us today on this webinar um, for, for an invitation that you have received from one of the sales consultants that visited your college or a, a, an electronic um, invitation through to you. So get hold of that sales consultant or we will leave our details in the chat box as well, um, an email address that you can contact. Um, or leave your contact details in. And as soon as the webinar is over, we will get in touch with you directly um, to guide you through the process of requesting a, um, a copy, a sample copy of the student book and lecture guide so that you and your college can make an informed decision come um, textbook ordering time. Okay, so yeah, just leave your contact details and we will get back to you immediately after the webinar. Um, okay, thank you. Okay, Arthur, this one is for you. Um, it's a two-part question. So firstly, uh, it's a thank you. And then secondly, um, when will the new N4 or Maths N4 syllabus be implemented? Well, there was writing that it should have been implemented in the beginning of 2021. But obviously, the, uh, the books weren't available. And we didn't quite know what the syllabus was until about June. So uh, these books are available. I know N4 is available already from your department. And uh, I would recommend that they start using it immediately because it's the new syllabus. The N5 and the N6 has been written. And uh, it is just a situation of being with you guys on the publishing side. And that will be available quickly as well. But I would certainly recommend all lecturers to get into the new syllabus immediately from the very first trimester. Now, this year, uh, our tech is only doing two trimesters, I suppose, it's throughout the country like that. Uh, I also believe it's 14 weeks, which is very nice. And what I'd, what I'd like to suggest to lecturers, I'll talk about the lecturers at our tech as well as, as you out there, our colleagues, is that you will notice that after uh, three weeks, we have our first test. After six weeks, we have a second test. Now, this trimester, we have 14 weeks. What I'd strongly advise is two weeks before the end of the trimester that you set a test on the, on the latest work between the second test and the end of the work. Because I find that students in the past, they tend to slack off once the second test has been written. And, uh, and then the marks are reflected in the exams. So I would strongly advise that we as lecturers do that third test as well, although it's not in the syllabus. But I would strongly recommend we do that so that our results can be can reflect our expertise in the classroom. Okay, thank you very much for that, Arthur. So in summary, uh, the N4 
uh, syllabus would be implemented this year already and Arthur is strongly advising that the book already be used um, and that yes rightfully as a national decision from DHET there's only two trimesters for this uh, 2022 academic calendar and the I believe the trimester one uh, academic calendar has started already and classes commence as of next week Wednesday I think the 16th so good luck, good luck for that. Um, let's just have a look at the chat area okay while well, I'm still waiting for questions to come in um, just one point of clarity colleagues um, as we are nearing the end we have about four more minutes left for the segment um, as we're reaching the end of our time here today please be reminded to complete a feedback survey that will be prompt to you at the end of the webinar as you exit. Um, it should not take you more than about a minute to complete and your input is valuable and will help us understand and improve our offering to you. And to ensure that you receive your SACE endorsed certificate for participating in today's webinar, please confirm your correct name, spelling, name and surname and then your direct email address in the survey and then we will use that to redirect the SACE endorsed certificate for your attendance today okay let me just have a look at the chat again okay it's thank yous absolute pleasure spending time with you today okay there's one related to the book and i think i'll address this one directly how are the qr codes how does it work or how is it used so the qr codes is a, a good feature that we added to the book to enhance the learning, the teaching and learning experience. So you would have one of two cellular phones. It would be a very smartphone based on the camera. So once you activate your camera, as if you're taking a picture, point it on the QR code and the camera, if it is um, a late model phone, it will automatically and take you to that website either a video or an article or an additional piece to read if the phone's camera is not that advanced you go to your google play store and you download an application which is a qr code scanner now you get various ones so you can pick from the lot um, and it is available in the google play store as well as your apple um, app store Download it and then you would use it as any other normal app. Once you open it up, it will activate or ask to activate your camera, allow the activation, point on the QR code and it will redirect you. And the websites, videos, those were carefully selected by Arthur and ourselves that redirect students and teachers to additional resources and information that speaks beyond what was prescribed by the DHET so that you can not only get the understanding of the learning outcome that you are required but the holistic understanding of why you are required to use it and where you would probably use it in a practical environment so the QR code is quite a cool feature to enhance your learning experience so with one minute left I don't see any other questions coming through for myself or for Arthur so with that, we will now end the webinar for today. Colleagues, we wish you a good day further and good luck with the start of trimester one classes next week and get hold of our sales consultants as soon as possible or leave us your email address and contact details for a sample copy or any other questions that you may have once the webinar has ended. So with that, thank you. Thank you very much, Arthur, for joining us. Um, so your time is highly appreciated and thank you very much colleagues for your time and have a good day further. Goodbye. Bye.